Log. I'm Michael. And I'm Craig. And we go through 2000 AD week by week, issue by issue. Today we are talking about prog number 2353. 2353, a good number. Um, what makes you say that? It's got a good mouthfeel. Uh, on the cover today we have got a big old picture of Judge Dredd with a big old gun standing in front of uh, East Meg. East Meg 2? East Meg 2, yeah. It's, it's a good cover in the tradition, the long tradition, of just 2000 AD covers that just have a picture of Judge Dredd on them. Well, uh, what I was going to say about it is that I think it's maybe a little bit of a generic cover for 2000 AD. That is a, it's a thing, though. Like You get your like other series, your not-as-well-known series, mm-hmm. they get the cover, and you get a Dredd that might have like a specific thing, but isn't. it's a new thing, so people don't know it. And often, they have to put out a cover that is just Dredd standing with a gun. A lot of the time, not necessarily a gun that he's holding... In the comic itself. Not a problem in this issue, because he is holding that gun. I I scrutinised that gun when, when it happened. I to see like, if it was a different yeah, big gun. I had this thought whilst reading the prog, and I was like, I need to check this, because it comes up a lot where it's like, why doesn't he have a lawgiver? Why has he got this like two-handed gun kind of thing? I think because a lawgiver, even though it's a really good pistol, mm. is still kind of a pistol, even though it shoots armour-piercing rounds. High and, explosives. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, Whammies. My thoughts on seeing this cover was, uh, like initially, that's a very generic cover. And then after like reading a bit of the, the actual Dread story, I went back to the cover and was like, is there anything about this that makes it relevant? And it was only then that I saw that there's a background of East Meg. Well, there's a background and he's got a different gun that is a relevant gun. The artist for this cover is Alex Ronald. Ronald. Alex Ronald. It must be Ronald, right? Alex Ronald. Uh, Earthlets. Right in. Let us know. Yeah. Once again, we've only ever seen these things written down. I think Mr. Ronald has done a pretty good job of making a cool Judge Dredd picture. Yeah, I mean, I like I like looking at it. I was like, yeah. I was just kind of like glancing over it. It kind of looks 3D-ish in places. Like, see his chin. Like, see his... Mm. It's a good Dread chin. Dread's chin is a very important yeah. part of the character design. It's kind of the only part of his face that is a face. Yeah. So. It might be the most important part of the character design, even though he's got Ooh, a big don't eagle. Know about that. He's got a bat. Like he's got so many gimmicks. But my god, that chin! See when the chin is on point. Mm. Incredible! You can't beat it. Let's move into the nerve center. Tharg is talking about how Galaxy's Greatest Comic pulse pounding Zarjazosity meters are at maximum levels in this autumn attack. He does call it the autumn attack. Which, like there was a spring offensive in the nineties. Really? And like that was when Grant Morrison and Mark Miller took over, and it's like a famous, well-remembered thing. And I've noticed recently, from mm-hmm. reading it in the last couple of years, when it's spring, he'll call it a spring offensive, and when it's autumn, he'll call it an autumn. Att- like, he'll, he'll call out the season. Mm-hmm. And like the seasons are changing. I enjoy that he's calling out that like it's cold now. Like I guess so. You've got to th- fill the page with something. I feel like there's a lot of filler in this this specific Zarg, uh, like Tharg, I should say. Really? Because I was going to say that, I mean, there's the same filler that there always is. He goes through all yeah. of the, the stories that are in the, the prog, but then he also has a thing where he's saying that he started to get feedback about the battle action uh, crossover. Yeah, but that's like the last couple of sentences. Like... And I mean, our most recent podcast at time of recording that have gone up have been the, the mm. battle action stuff. Was there a battle action stuff? Positive. I'm trying to remember. I think it was vaguely positive. It was jam-packed with Nazis. I've got no problem with Nazis. You were saying that you and the headmaster of the Colton Hove School of Psychic Defense mm-hmm. was saying that he was feeling like reading 2000 AD because we're so positive. That's true. We have been getting good positive feedback, but I don't know if like Thar, I don't know if you would like class our feedback as good feedback for this note. Maybe not. I also very much don't think that Tharg has heard our podcast, but... One the, day. The thought did occur to mm. me. Then we've got the damage report, which I do like to keep an eye on, even though it has been a bit nothing recently. Bit nothing it's, it's still a bit nothing like, this uh, time? Well, this time it is starting to develop into something. Mm. The damage report, which is the little Indicia box that has its own little ongoing story. If, yeah. if this is your first prog slog... It's, yeah. it's inbuilt into the like legal text at yeah. the bottom of the page. So... 
Damage report, week three and the enforced positivity in the command module is starting to show signs of waning. The uh, smiles are still there amongst the droids as they cheerfully deliver the scripts and the art bots are veritably beaming as they repeatedly enter FTP login details, even offering a little little chuckle as each error message pops back at them. Then there's a strained look behind the eyes, something's going to snap. It's developing. Yeah. You were theorising that it might have something to do with there was a big fireball in well, Oxford. Well, I'm waiting for that. There, yeah. like, there was a fire... Like, lightning struck some sort of, like, chemical containers or something, but the aftermath did look like three UFOs that had been down, like it was big circular mm. tank type things. If damage, if damage Report doesn't work that real-life event into the Damage Report, I'll be bewildered because yeah. that, that's free content like you can like something happened at the command module and there was an explosion like st- st- use it yeah. please uh you've alluded before about how they do pull in like news stories yeah. to to the damage report story that they have ongoing there was that bit where tharg got audited like they they found like secret service a, papers a, or yeah, something like a, they, they, a beetlejuicean authority that happened to have the the initials fbi i yeah. think uh came to to audit tharg because uh, Joe Biden was being audited at the time. Yeah, I think that this is kind of developing into something just because they're starting to seed this idea that like it's a enforced positivity thing, yeah. and that the entire uh, nerve center is beholden to it. There might be some kind of reaction, but yeah, it's it, a it's a far cry from the comedy that like they were hitting out with during the plague years. The plague years were a good time for yeah. us. The, and for Tharg. But the, a bad time for us, really. But a bad a good time, time for humanity, yeah. but a great time for Beetlejuiceans. The thing is, it's been a while since they've started again. I wasn't expecting them to start, because they, they had their story about AI, mm-hmm. and then that fi- like, finished. Yeah, very abruptly. Very abruptly I don't finished. think either of us thought that was the end of that. No, not at all. But this is just starting up, so I don't think I've seen one that's been just starting up in a very long time. Mm-hmm. So I guess maybe this is just what, like... You know, it's a sentence. It's a paragraph. It's hidden. Like, yeah. Let's move on to Judge Dredd. Dredd. So here we have Judge Dredd: Poison Part Three. Script by Rob Williams. Art by P.J. Holden. Uh, colors by Peter Doherty. And letters by Simon Boland. So uh, this is. Uh, we're now finally in East Meg Two. We're, we're not in space anymore. No, they've left the colony. I forget what the colony was called now, but uh, Nubis or something. Yeah, Nubis. Yeah. And we are following a woman in uh, a very Russian-looking city. So it is, I was saying that like East Meg 2 might be China, mm. but it's, it's not. That's just me being pig ignorant. Uh, the Russia did get nuked in the Dread World. Like it, like, yeah, and, and, like, and like the size that mega cities are, like I mm. could absolutely see them saying that mega, East Meg 1 is all of Russia, yeah. or the Soviet Union as would be then. But um, no. No, it's, it's Russia 2. It's yeah. like we, we still want to do Russia stuff. This woman is looking around a Russian city, and she is dodging some some Soviet judges. And at one point, she tells herself to think in Russian. Ah, yeah, that is a point. I did like that because sign judges are presumably a thing. Yeah, so she doesn't want to be picked out as as someone American. Is thinking in in yeah. non sov non sov because uh, the Soviet Union never stopped existing in 2080, partially because they created the 2080 setting while the Soviet Union still existed. <laughs> yes. But she then gets to a door, she knocks on it, someone is like, oh, who are you? And she's like, I'm looking for somebody, and he threatens her away. And uh, it's all quite spyish feeling. It's quite spyish, and I have no idea who she is. No, neither do I. Dredd is talking slightly later about how he wanted to go and be the spy guy. Yeah. uh, With the aid of a face transplant. Yeah, like, I I don't know if we'll get to it or should we talk about it now, but I found that transition where he was, I, I wasn't clear that that was Dredd thinking about that. Really? Because I, I don't know if it was just Because it's, it's on the page where Dread appears. Yeah, but like it didn't feel... I don't know. When I was reading it, it didn't feel... I had to go back a couple of times to get the, the gist of it. Mm. It just felt like it was maybe misplaced where the, the bubble was being. It might just be my, my reading of it. Am I misremembering, actually? Because it might not be on the... It was just uh, just how it like the flow... Because like, there was stuff happening with the spy woman doing spy stuff in mm. Russia. And then like the, the, the thought bubbles or like the caption boxes are the same colour, I think? They're not changing. Co- they're not changing color for specific characters. So I was like, "Oh, is it a different person thinking now, or is it the spy woman thinking?" Yeah. Uh, it appears the the box I'm thinking of, where he'd wanted to go into East Meg Two himself under a face change. That is the first panel after we cut away from Dread. Right. 
So I wasn't clear because I was like, he? What do you mean he? Like, I mean, I like the spy stuff. I'm just very not invested in it because I don't know who she is. Yeah. And I'm like, and it's one of those things in I think her name's Domino? Yeah, Domino. Like the, the X-Men? Isn't there an X-Men? There's oh, an X-Men yeah. character called Domino. It's the thing with 2000 AD where like, sometimes you'll know who these returning characters are mm. and be in on it. And then other times like this, it's like, I'm like, this could be like a shock return for all we oh, know. Oh, absolutely. Like, it could be. I don't. It could be, or it's just like, oh, you're meant to know Dread got this character to go with them to do this infiltration. I don't really think it matters who this is. No. Is the thing. I think that there probably is some history with this character mm. based on things that go on to happen. The reason why I wanted to call out Dread wanting to go and be the spy under the face change yeah. is... Dread doesn't need a face change. No one knows what he looks like. He never takes his helmet off. That he could be... literally just take his helmet off and go in there. And no one would know. I feel like people are maybe know in universe what he looks like. Cause there's been a Some lot... people must do. Yeah. Cause like he, like that, I've alluded to that one story I read where he had a medical. Mm -hmm. And like in that scene, he did have his helmet off, but you didn't see his face. There's a lot it? of comedy where like yeah. plants obscure his face. Like the angle yeah. of the camera obscures it. So pe people must know. Yeah. But the like... reader never gets to see what Judge Dredd, Judge Dredd looks like. Yeah. Unless he happens to look like Sylvester Stallone. Yes. Also, it doesn't matter because, like, what's he going? He's going to look like some guy. Yeah. Like, it's not like, oh my god, it's, it's it dreads actually. This guy's no, he's, he's he's some judge. Yeah. He's probably he like he he'll look like his chin, but a full face. Yeah. When we cut to dreads, he is outside of a cave holding a big gun. A, the big gun. Yeah. Well, now that you've brought up, I'm looking at the gun. It's it like, looks slightly less chunky in detail. It is more rendered on the cover, but yeah. that's because it's a cover. But like the gun in the comic, it clear. See the the stock at the back has the same black bit. Like it, it's clearly going for the same thing, if yeah. not exactly, which is enough for me. It's probably the same design as interpreted by two different artists. Yes. Also, the gun is like important to this strip. Like it's well, it's it, very important to this particular scene. It's like it's it's part of the scene, like it's it's the crux of Dredd's appearance yeah. in this issue of 2018. It's, it, it's the only thing he does. Yeah. But it's it's good enough that I, I quite like this as a Dredd story. I was anyway. wondering when I was reading it, I was wondering how you would take the, the Dredd stuff, so Uh well I've I've really been enjoying Poison, even mm. though I do kind of agree that it's a little bit slow. It's a little bit slow. But like specifically in this, because like a lot of it's taken up by this character I don't know. Yeah. and don't care about. And then there's like a conversation with Dredd yeah. and some tech judges. Well, I'll say what it is. So yeah. Dredd is standing outside this cave with a gun. I, I think a pilot. Uh, he does have a badge, so I can tell you what his name is. It's Ur 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 Thor? Ur -thor? Ur -thor? Ur -thor? I, I find it hard to look at the judges' names a lot of the time because like, they're sort of scribbled in there. Yeah. It's a bit hard to make out, really, but... Um, the main thing about him is he's either a pilot or a tech judge, and tech judges are a thing. There might be another letter obscured by the chain, but it's U-R-T-O-H. Urtaw. It could be anything, really. Anyway, Urtaw Ur com com comes out of the, the cave. Uh, you can see in one of the panels that there's like clearly some kind of craft in the cave. And he's saying, like, hey, you know, Dreads, like... It's not much point in you having a big gun out here, because, like, if things go well, no one will discover us, so you won't need to shoot anything. And if things go badly, like, if they... Because we've, we've flown in here on, like, a, a new super... Super advanced, stealth. Super stealth plane. And if they've got some technology that can, like, track that, then they're going to come after us with, like, the whole army. So, like, one big gun isn't going to help. What's amazing about Dredd's reaction is the first panel... <laughs> Which is a beat panel. The first panel of just him staring at the guy. Is he like? Nothing. Is he like twice the height? Or like, is he like a head taller than him as well? Or well, he's, he's he is noticeably taller. Than yeah, him. but that beat panel is spectacular. <laughs> just like dread, like like looking, and also like you can read this two different ways because yeah. like one way would be like him being like this fucking guy, yeah, coming over here giving me this shit. See, I didn't read it that way. I read it more of a like, well, I I could do. This well, like... that that is that that is another way, maybe three. Mm -hmm. So it's like you know he's he's genuinely considering it would be yeah. that way, and the other way would be dread is actually like caught out and embarrassed by this. <laughs> yeah, because like he's realised that he's right, and then there's a panel like oh shit. But then yeah, then his response is well, I could use this gun to kill both of you pilots blow up the super stealth jet, and then they don't get any of our there's, tech about the super stealth there's jet. There's no way they can, like, interrogate it or, like... You can't tell them about the yeah. super stealth jet, and there's no super stealth jet for them to find. I read it, because we were talking about previous... In previous prog slogs, we were talking about your, your autistic reading of Dread, mm. and I read it very much as a... Well, I, I, could, I could kill you. I, <laughs> I, I, could, I could shoot you and shoot him and then shoot the plane and none of our stealth tech. Like, just very honest and very, like, that would be a good outcome. Or, like, if a bad thing happened... 
we could solve it this way. <laughs> it could be any of these. Yeah. And I think all of them work with how Dread is in my mind. I feel like I if this... Like if this page wasn't in this strip, I'd be rating it quite lowly. I know we'll mm. talk about ratings towards the end, but like, it's one of those stories where like Dread isn't the main focus of the, the plot. Yeah, It's just a lovely appearance by him, and it's certified good Dread work. Um, and, and then uh, the pilot like walks back to the other one, and the other one's like, did that go well? And he's like, no, it didn't go well. No, it didn't go and well. The, the, the other part's like, I, I did tell you. <laughs> don't go and talk to Judge Dredd. Go just, I love when judges just casually talk to Dredd. Like, sometimes they like give him shit or like... Well, often it's a police procedural yeah. thing, so it's a character that Dredd has to get some info from. But like a lot of times, there's maybe it's like a younger and older judge thing, but like they're, they're both like comedy space fascists. Yeah. But like sometimes the strip plays them like they're monsters. And then other times like this... These little tech guys who are just, who are just pilots or tech people, they they just have like they're like well you know dread like they just fucking saddle up to dread <laughs> and they're like well you, I reckon like it, I've seen that in a few recent strips and I really love it when it comes up because it's like the idea of approaching this fucking monolith yeah and then just have just chipping in an opinion or like sometimes people put a joke at them and it never goes well because it's dread it's like a hierarchy thing because mm. uh, any judge to a mega city citizen would probably be this incredibly intimidating, like, yeah. secret police. Well, not even secret police, just, like... Omnipresent. Omnipresent police. Well, there's not supposed supposed to be enough judges to properly police Mega City 1. It goes back and forward on it that. It does. But, like, you know, they're a very intimidating, like, extremely violent... They are the violence. law. They, they are they... the law. Uh, within that structure, though, Dread is that to all of the other judges. Yeah, he is the judge judge. Anyway, back to the plot. The guy who was threatening the judge who I'm going to call Domino, because I think that was her name. I think that's her I name, yeah. Can... The guy who was intimidating her is uh, punched back into the room that he was in mm-hmm. after trying to scare her away. She sees this solve guy in a wheelchair with one leg and this is the guy that she was looking for and she's like oh i thought you could afford better security and he's like well i could do that back when i worked for the states and now i'm a a rogue agent that a freelancer like a freelancer and she's like yeah cool uh we're looking for the guy that we identified as the person that probably had the poison that killed hershey uh, can you help me here and he's like well remember how i said i was a freelancer i work for the highest bidder and in this case the highest bidder is east meg too and then just a bunch of East Meg judges are behind her with uh, with lawgivers, and that's the that that's the cliffhanger. Yeah. He, he has a little crack about you know that such is capitalism. He does say that. Yeah, I, I work for the highest bid- bidder. I such feel like that's capitalism. like a stereotype or a, like a trope in action movies where there's like a, a former Soviet guy who mentions something about capitalism or like is now a capitalist because you know the Soviet Union fell and they're using that as like. Well, you know, now I'll, I'll double cross you because, like, I'm an American mm. capitalist. Now. Like, I feel like I've seen that in multiple things. I mean, there's definitely the duality drawn between capitalism and communism, mm. which, like, was actually probably not the, like, motivating ideology of the Cold War, really. No, but. Because, you know, we won't necessarily get into political theory, but, like, <laughs> that's that's definitely, like, what it gets boiled down to in movies and so on, yeah. Welcome to the politics cast. <laughs> you didn't think there was any politics in your 2000 AD, but we're still. Stuffing it in there. Well, if we get any of those kind of comments, then like I will have long arguments with whoever's leaving them. I mean, I'm glad you're looking forward to that. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm taking nothing to do with it. Did, did you like this one? Did you like this? Uh, this I did script? like it, yeah. Mm. Uh, I liked this better than the stuff where they were stuck on Nubis, mm. and I, I quite like those, if you recall. I I like the East Meg stuff. Mm-hmm. I like seeing East Meg judges, uh, solve judges. Anytime we explore the setting yeah. a little bit more, I do like it. I love the conversation. The conversations talked here. Like last week, we were talking about how a lot of the strips were just conversations. Yeah, and this one isn't. Like it's got stuff, but there is the, the best thing about it is a conversation. So like, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's it's characterization yeah. is important, and uh, I feel like the conversations that we were perhaps complaining about mm. were well. I was going to say they weren't really characterization; they were just exposition. Mm. I think that there was some characterization in Dead World, but I just didn't like it very much. <sighs> We'll, we'll talk about Dead World when we get to we, we this. We will. We will. The it's comedy as well. Like it was a comedy scene with Judge Dredd. Mm-hmm. I'm glad to be out of space because I didn't want. I, I like when space turns up. I don't want to be stuck there. Mm-hmm. We talked about that. I don't necessarily want to be stuck in East Meg Two either. I, I, I like Dread being in Mega City One and it being like a cyberpunk thing. And I know this is more of a Soviet flavored cyberpunk thing, but I'm worried that this story basically will run until Christmas. Uh, I th- might do. Tharg was talking about how 
these stories will take us to Christmas. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that necessarily means this one dread story will take us to Christmas, but I'm not necessarily up for, like, world-hopping stuff for the next three months. No, I would probably like it best if this investigation into the guy that killed Hershey finds the guy that killed Hershey and... I mean, you've got to have some twists and turns, I guess. Yeah. But like, well, look, with this, right? I, I, I didn't quite get. I, I, I kind of want it to get dealt with within this run. I didn't. I didn't quite get that this was a spy sent. Like she was sent to find the poison guy. Mm-hmm. Um, from just reading it the once, even though she asked the the turncoat guy about. I didn't remember the guy's name because he's got a people name. Like he, he's some guy. She like, also showed a picture of his face. Did she? Yeah. I don't remember that at all. I read it the once. I was like, I guess I was like disconnected because I was like, you're some person that I don't know. Like, I don't, why don't you judge dread, you judge dread things? You, you forgot what the plot was. No, I remember that we're here to do Hershey things mm. and like Hershey was like actively killed by someone and we're dealing with that now. I, though I do have a thing to say about that. The other thing is, I was like, this, this woman has black hair and like she's got shaved sides. Yeah. I was like, is she a Hershey clone? She does look a little bit... No, like she doesn't have the severe bob. But she does have a haircut. If you if you showed me this outside of context and was like, guess who this Judge Dredd character is, I might say that this you is might... Hershey. So, like, I was distracted by that. I was like, oh, is she, like, another thing that's developing on the side yeah. of, like, the investigation? Like, and is it going to be revealed that this character is a Hershey clone? Because Hershey clones are at play. They, yeah, they, the concept has been introduced. Yeah. And I like, you know, like, Judge Dredd himself is a clone. And I do like the setting where, like, you know, clones are a thing. They're just about. I'm not complaining that clones. I'm not saying clones are bad. I'm just saying, like, we have to think about that one. Do you think that Judge Dredd is the only character who is a clone where that's not the central point of his character? I was going to say when you were talking, there, I was going to say the clones from Star Wars, but that's they are that is they're the clone center. troopers. They're clone yeah. troopers, but like. Because, like, Judge Dredd... Being clones isn't necessarily... Like, you know, like, clone media. Judge, yeah, but Judge Dredd is a clone. He is also the clone of the final president of the United States. That's not even, like, the top three things that you think about when you think about Judge Dredd. <laughs> is he a clone of the final president of the United States, or is he a clone of the, the last chief judge? I thought the chief no, judge was I, his I, dad. I, I remember from that story with uh, the character Q Gannon. Q Gannon, yeah. That he managed to take control of the Q Gannon possessed... Uh, Judge Judge Robots Mm. by invoking his authority as a clone of the last president of the United States. I thought he was invoking his authority as the law. Well, he also did that, yes. He he shouted, I am the law. That was incredible. And that happened in Atlantis, the the service station between Britsit and Mega City (laughs) 1. That was a good story, but we're not covering that story. We're not, but... So, I was distracted by her looking at Kershey, because I was like, is this a Hershey thing? Yeah. But also, there's there's some dialogue where Dredd is talking about he's up for giving the the solves the war that they clearly want. Yeah, like if he's like he has a whole thing about like, if they killed Hershey, I'll nuke them again. Basically, he, he's very angry. He's he, very angry that his friend was killed. He's very angry and emotional. I don't necessarily think it. I know we've talked about this. I know that you you convinced me partially, but I still don't think that connects necessarily with the actual Hershey run because he was very cold there. And like I, we've talked about it, you, you, like it was, you didn't process the thing, and like that—that that, that is his character. But like as a story, I don't feel like it necessarily follows. I, I, on. I, d- I don't think you're wrong. Is the mm. thing I'm just saying. Like my interpretation as I was reading it, I don't see a problem with this. If you do, I'm not gonna. I'm not saying that like it's not a problem. Like um, Dredd's characterization in the Hershey story, he, he met Hershey before she died, yeah. and like was resolving her story. And, like, his attitude was, like, fuck off, basically. Like you... I don't think it was quite fuck off, because he also bent the rules for her, which, as Slightly. Judge Dredd, he never does. No, but, like, he... He, he allowed like... her to go back into Mega City 1 after she'd been on a long walk. He's, he's, like, he's ultimate lawful evil, though, right? And, like, No, he... he's ultimate... Judge Dredd mm. is ultimate lawful neutral, following the laws of a lawful evil state. So, ultimate lawful neutral. And, like, Hershey's dead to him. Because she, she's taking the long walk or whatever, and he doesn't... Like, that's what she's doing. Mm-hmm. She doesn't get to come back. And, like, I get I get that maybe it's realistic for him to, like, think that, and then when she dies in an alley, then he starts his investigation into what kills her because she's dead. Well, but why, like, would, why he, would he investigate a murder before it's happened? But he was happy to, like, just send her out into the world to obviously die in the horrible apocalypse world. It's the done thing, Craig. It is the done thing, but that's my point. It's the done thing. Like he was ha- that was that was his characterization in the Hershey strips. Yeah. Like you'd taken a long walk. You either did a bad thing. You didn't respect her authority anymore. So whatever that was, he doesn't respect her anymore. I, I guess you can not respect someone and then be sad that they died. I don't necessarily buy the judge dread 
would do that, but... Like I say, like, I don't think you're wrong. I just think that this is something that doesn't bother me. Like, it doesn't seem like a contradiction to me. If it does to you, I think that's I think, valid. I think probably if you listen back to this, it probably sounds that I'm being very negative about it. And I don't feel that when I'm reading it. It's mm. just, I'm enjoying bits of this, but, like, I don't feel... I don't fully need this. Like, I don't need this to be the Dread story currently. I like this it is, but... Yeah. Okay. Uh, before we move on, do you want to discuss the advert that's on the page after Judge Dredd? I don't have much, much to say about it. Is it an ad for the, the mixtape where it's like the best of collection? Yeah, kind of well, it, like the only thing I've got to say about it is that it's it's called the mixtape. Mm-hmm. And it looks like the, the cover of the mixtape, because like, what it is, is is a comic. Yeah, It's like a collection of comic stories. But like the cover of the mixtape look makes it look like it's a mixtape, like a music <laughs> mixtape, because they've got Judge Anderson and I is that Hershey? That's somebody like dressed out in like sexy clothes dancing. I don't know if the character like so like Judge is that that other character? Do you remember there was that thing where there were like three female judges mm, in like a special story that were like vaguely. hanging out? The thing about the cover, the thing about the mixtape cover is like. Like, is this Judge Anderson, like, in the background, all in pink? Yeah, in a different sexy outfit. Yeah. I. It must be, because she's blonde. She's the, the, the only blonde people. Yeah. Like, only blonde people can be side judges. The, <laughs> the thing about the cover is, I suspect it to be the work, without even checking, mm-hmm. of the um the high school mag- the magical high school lowborn high oh lowborn high um, from from the regen yeah. issues and that's the only notable thing i want to say about the- I, I have one notable thing to say about it which uh is really the reason why i was going to bring it up in the first place mm-hmm. if you look at sexy judge anderson here uh she is wearing her badge on her hip ah. and the chain is coming up and i want to say that it's it, she's got her badge as a walkman as a walkman <laughs> And that's why she's dancing, because she's listening to her Judge Badge Walkman. <laughs> it could be a Walkman. I mean, like, I absolutely, uh, I see what you're saying there. Yeah. It could just be, like, a purse. I didn't... It I could d- just be a purse. I didn't I don't, even looking, notice. Looking at it now, I don't see any headphones, but... I mean, like, it's clearly, yeah, it says Psy on it, so it, that clearly is Judge Anderson, but, like, I didn't notice that. But um, It's not a very, like, good prong for me noticing the details <laughs> that the things are about. But, like, I just thought it was some generic women... On a cover because it's, I don't know, like that was maybe that one of the yeah. sto- one of the stories in that comic might involve them. And the the last thing that I've got to say about this is that it's a it's like a piece of artwork within an artwork. So there's this uh, cover of the the mixtape being uh, glared at over by a shadowy figure of Judge Dredd in the shadows by a different artist. It looks by like a different one. artist, looking very creepy and yeah, disapproving, yeah, yeah. very like oh, ju- 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 those sunny judges. They get too much with leave. their music oh. and enjoying things. I was just about to say with their enjoying things. <laughs> good ad and good concept as well, because it's like here, do you want to get into two thousand eighty? Here's some classic or classic or recent good stories. So sorry about like bringing that up because it's kind of nothing. It's just an advert. I, I love bringing up adverts. I thought it was funny. I think there should be more ads in comics. <laughs> So, our next story is Helium Scorched Earth Part 3, script by Ian Edgington, art by Disraeli, and letters by Simon Boland. Uh, we last left the team in a situation where they were underneath the poison scaffolds covering the Earth, and they'd come across a monstrous, but as we were pointing out, quite cute giant pig. I love the pigs, I love the art in this. I loved this, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say right away, I know we, we talk about the thing mm-hmm. all the way through, but I, I love this. I thought it was pretty good. I uh, I loved every bit of this. I don't necessarily know if I loved it as much as you did then. I'll get to the bits and I'll, I'll give my justifications. Yeah. Uh, Robot Man, who I think I should know the name of now because I think they call it out. I, mm. think it's called, I think he's called Mr. Grimsby. Mr. Grimsby. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Grimsby. That's the thing. Cause that's, that's a great name for, like, Robot Abraham Lincoln, Popeye looking dudes. I'll probably still keep calling him Robot Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. But, like, is this the thing where, like, you know, they were czars? Yes. But, like, they're hanging out in Britain and have taken British identities kind of thing. I don't think it's that. I think that there might have been a czar of Britain. Like, it's... it's I'm still unclear about thing. that, because they've got ministers that are the master from Doctor Who. Yeah. And... They're in the Midlands. I, I still can't really tell you because I haven't gone back and read any old... Even though we can read all of Helium for free, potentially still yeah. three weeks potentially on Potentially from... right now. Right now, we could break out 
have no. no. Part of it has been that we do have day jobs and it does take a lot of energy out of you. If you want us to read more comics and then read them <laughs> at you, hit up the patron. Pay us money. Yeah. Send us presents. Please, for the love of Christ. Anyway, what happens in this comic is Mr. Grimsby goes and fist fights the giant pig. One. Love it. Yeah. Like, he, he fights the... He, like, that upper... He does an uppercut, right? Punches he, it right on the nose. Love it. That It's very anime. Like, a lot of his interactions with things, I found... Or at least manga. Like, I found very, like... I would maybe even say Looney Tunes at one point. Co- like, comedy. Like, comedy action. Yeah. And, like, done... But, like, done in a very, like, believable way. Punches the pig. He mm. tells the other two to run. They do run. Continues to fight the pig. And then another pig turns up. And he's like, oh, so this must be the dad pig. Yeah, so, like, we, we're right to call it out as a cute pig. Because it's, yeah. it's smaller than the bigger pig that turns up. There's always a bigger pig. There's always a bigger pig. Also, one of the characters is like, should, should we just leave Robot Abraham Lincoln there? Yeah. And the other character is like, oh, this isn't as bad as chucking out time at, like, at a the pub that a, he used to be the bouncer at. Yeah, like, a named pub. Yeah. And, like, love that. Like, I, I, I thought characterization that, on point. I thought that was a funny line, but mm. also, like, is it? No, not that, as bad as I mean, chucking right. out time at that pub. I mean, that, that must have been a very biohazard. It's a it's a giant pub. it's a giant monster pig <laughs> like, that's toxic and like it's got tendrils coming off. It's like yeah, like I had the exact same thought, but it's good like Englishy bantery kind of like humor yeah. and it, it's like a fight scene as well for most of the comic, or mm-hmm. like a, a fight scene in an aftermath of a fight scene. After they've been talking about how, like, should we just leave them, they see a, uh, a building, because even though this is, like, a post-apocalyptic, like, mm-hmm. surface world, it's kind of the opposite of the surface world, actually, because it's underneath the poisonous gas cloud. But, but it's the previous surface yeah. world. It's, it's well, what, whatever you would call that. The, the ground level. Yeah. Where... It, but, like, it's been gassed, but there's still buildings there. So That there's... building, that panel of that building. Another point in the comics favor. Mm. I love it. I would love to see that on, like, a fucking stamp or something. Like, it, it's just a lovely picture. Of a rubble, like a mostly destroyed and then overgrown building. Well, I wouldn't even say necessarily say it looks like it's mostly destroyed. It looks like a building that's just got a bunch of like fantasy fungus growing out yeah. of it. But they're like, oh well, go go there and take shelter because like you know we need to. We like, need to go we, somewhere. We, like... we need to go somewhere, and also like those pigs have our scent now. <laughs> They'll keep hunting us as, until they have us. And uh, one of them's like, oh, we can't go there. What about Mister Grimsby? Like, you know, what? If, yeah. What? What about Mister Grimsby? And and then Mister Grimsby sails through the air over the top of their heads towards this building, having been punted across great distances by, by a monster a, pig. By a monster pig. Love it. Like a fight is happening, but it's not necessarily like a. It is a life or death fight, but it's not really a life or death fight. He, he's got a little line yeah. going, uh, like behind him, to show the direction of motion as he plummets into the building yeah. that they were just arguing about going to. And then, like when they get to him, they're like, "Are you still alive?" Yeah. And he's like, <laughs> "No." Yeah. And he's like, his head, because he's like a head on a robot body in a bowl, is like tucked into the bowl. He's like, he's like against the bowl, like, "No." I did get a bit of a chuckle out of that when she said, "Grimsby, are you alive?" No. And then she's like, "That's not good enough. Get up, come yeah, on." That, that's really good. Like, that's good comic work. I lo- I lo- like very endearing. So the pig comes on, smashes through the building. Uh, they run away from it um, and are saved by a uh, an incendiary shot from a cannon on a train. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is one of the major points that I wanted to bring up. Oh, because... I was glad. I'm so glad because yeah. this is the other thing I wanted to bring up. So they they get saved by these guys who are dressed in like World War Two soldier costumes with like big gas masks and that like kind of conical tin helmet. They might have spikes on the top of their hanging. Yeah, one of them's it's got a German helmet, helmet, like for World War One, the yeah. Hun. You know, uh, most of them look like like you know British soldiers from World War One. Yeah. But like one guy, yeah, you're right, has a German helmet. So the scientist guy who's been like telling them the details about the surface world question mark mm-hmm. the whole time is like, oh dear. They're sloggers. They meet us. Like, <laughs> like we we are the cliffhanger for this strip. Like four issues into us doing yeah. a podcast about called Prog Slog, <laughs> they introduce into one of the strips a group of characters called Sloggers. I mean, surely this was written months ago. Yeah, you know, like six to nine months, or maybe even longer, because they've been away for eight years, and like it might have been building. But yes, just an incredible coincidence. An incredible coincidence, and I'm absolutely up for like committing to the kayfabe of us broadcasting from this fucking land train. <laughs> We'll just distort our voices, like, to have, like, gas mask filters on them for the rest of time. And... We'll just need to, like, completely overhaul, like, the entire presentational yeah. style. And, like, all those uh, episodes before <laughs> Prog 
two, three, five, three, like just didn't happen. Yep. And uh, we'll continue that joke long after Helium has ended. Yeah. It's like, so- sorry, listeners, uh, we're late this week because a fucking giant pig <laughs> rammed into our land train. I love the pigs. Uh. Loved it. Great. Land train's pretty cool. The land train looks cool. They look like um Nort. They do they do a bit, but largely because of the yeah. World War One ish aesthetic. Norts look like World War One or World War Two Nazis, yeah. but like the <sighs> Norts we should probably say are from the Rogue Trooper and also Jaeger Stravoy Stragoy. Just Jaeger. Um, I think they just call it Comic Jaeger. strips which take place in the same continuity. They're like comedy space Nazis. or Well, there's like two factions. There's the Southers and the Norts. Mm. And it was in Rogue Trooper a set up where like the Southers were the Allied forces and the Norts were the you know the Nazis, basically. Don't they... I think Jaeger Strigoi made it slightly more nuanced than that, where like the, the, the Southers were kind of bad in other yeah, ways yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. But like they they speak like comedy Nazis. Yeah. Like don't don't they have like in, like all the C's are turned into K's and stuff like yeah stuff like, like that stuff like that and um they, they they just look like you know World War One World War Two guys but because it's in two thousand AD mm. I specifically see them as Norts. Uh, did you have any kind of reaction to there being people under the gas cloud? Because uh, me hmm. having my like history with helium being that I read it and then forgot it. Yeah, but like I I was under the impression that like. You didn't get that. Well, sloggers are a proud people. <laughs> and a strong people. And if anybody could survive the toxic, like, all of the Earth is covered in World War One gas and bioplague, mm-hmm. it'd be the sloggers, I would say. Oh, for sure. Don't they have... <laughs> Should we have a Patreon tier that's called the sloggers? With, well, th- with like, a, a picture of one of these guys. <laughs> this week... That, that is great. Because I was thinking about that this week. I wasn't yeah. thinking about Patreon. I was thinking, like, we need, like, a name to call our listeners. You yeah. Know, like, that's the thing that, like, you know, influencers have for, like, their pages and things and podcasters. And I was like, well, you know, Earthlets exist, like, Thar exists. Yeah. Like, we are Earthlets or humans. He does say humans a lot more nowadays. Uh, I want to say thanks to I the... I think he always said humans. He definitely did. Yeah. But I want to say there's been a sharp uptake in humans. You're, you're, you're talking about that because humans was also a piece of vocabulary mm. that was used in Sonic the Comic, which was also published by the same people. Yeah. But obviously it was a kid's comic about Sonic the Hedgehog in the UK. Yeah, and there's been a very successful podcast yeah. recently about that. But I, I, which I have to assume the people that make comics... Oh, I, I, to. yes, I, I would absolutely imagine because that's been a very, very successful podcast. Yeah. They definitely listen to that one. Absolutely. Um, so, like, having read two thousand a day for two or three years now, there was a point where he started to say humans like every week, uh, and like it wasn't the case before, and he may have died down on it a bit recently, but it definitely got infected. But like Earthlets, but now that we've got sloggers, and hopefully they're cool guys, they do look like murderous raiders. Well, the, and then they're presented like murderous they, raiders. Well, they could be raiders, but they're not murderous because they they like get their guns on these guys mm. that they just found out in the wild. But like they specifically don't open fire yeah. or try and rob them. And like the only like uh, aggressive thing that anybody says is to Grimsby, mm. who is a giant robot Popeye man. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, easy there, Lado, if you want to keep your head. And like that's about as far as it goes. Yeah. So And he is only a head. And so it's they, a good guy. They didn't need to shoot that pig with the big gun. No, that's true. They could have just let them get pegged. I assume that they'll get on this land train and like that's how they'll get to the next place they're going. Probably, yeah. Maybe there'll be some betrayal along the way, but it's it's hard to hear that from sloggers, because you, you want to see them portrayed like, you know, peak human, peak top guy. They've got a land they train! Yeah. They're everything I love! A land train as opposed to what, exactly? A sea train, or an air train. <laughs> They've got a, a train. They've got a train that goes under the gas. Under and the it's gas. a train, and it's an armoured train. But it's a, it's a train that's an armoured train. It's a land train, specifically. Because it isn't on rails, as far as I can see. Although that would be fun if they had rails on, like, the poisoned earth. You know, actually, it does look a bit like it's got big wheels now that I'm looking at it. it... I was kind of assuming that they were just using the old railways that would Mm -hmm. exist, because, as we've already pointed out, this was England. I'm up for both, because, like, I like... Because land trains, you call me out for my use of land train. I'm using it absolutely correctly. (laughs) You do get, like, land trains that are, like, wheel-based, like, big steamroller-y wheel-type... Like things that are clearly trains, but they don't go on rails. That's what I got from this. Mm. But it would also be a vibe of them because it's like turn of the century stuff. Yeah, it would be all those rails. It would be pretty cool if they were using those rails. And like military trains were a thing that existed. Mm-hmm. Like you know, there there were a lot of uh, artillery 
guns mm-hmm. that just went on. I wheels. have seen quite a lot of Nazi trains. Yeah, na- Nazi gun trains. In they particular. fucking loved their Nazi gun trains. I don't think they were the only ones that used those, but they had the biggest ones. There are currently big trains. I think is it in Russia still. There's still big armored trains. Yeah. There's famously that level of Goldeneye that takes place on that armored train. I guess that's not the most recent thing in the world. No. I was gonna. Was. I was gonna bring up that the fact that um, the North Korean uh, leader went to Russia recently. By train specifically. Well, uh, this doesn't necessarily have, a, have anything to do with anything, but it's a, a fact I've got an opportunity to, to, to fire up. Uh, the, the leader of North Korea, no matter who that would be, back when it was Kim Jong Il, that was mm. this was also the case. Uh, has their own railway, yeah, not just train, an entire railway all across North Korea mm. that only the personal train of the leader of North Korea gets to use. I don't want to necessarily praise North Korea, but that that is how you do a dictatorship, right? Like I mean it's definitely like strong dictator energy. Yeah, like it's again It's I'm, not a good thing. Not but doing dicta- gets... you can't do a dictatorship well, but no. like if you are a dictator, you may as well have your own railway. Like mm. not only do the trains run on time, they do so because only I go on them. There's only one train, <laughs> my train. <laughs> Do you have anything else to say? The art's still on point. The art's, right? Yeah, the art looks great. Like we were talking, we called out the the kind of comedy um, physicalness of them getting punched mm. out of the forest and into the house. I just thought, I mean, like it just it just looks really good. I love all the smog, like the pink against you know their heads are illuminated in blue. Yeah, the air is pink and their their faces are blue mm. because of the helmets. I was very sad, and I feel like I should call this out, and I'll be I'll be regretting this if I don't mention this. Mm-hmm. Sad that that pig died. It was the daddy pig, though. It was the daddy pig. Like, I don't the mummy pig. Might, the cute pig might be fine. <laughs> but they're both cute pigs, though. Like <laughs> one's cuter than the other because it's smaller. But like I like they're just like I feel sad. Also, the 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 daddy pig has angry eyes. You did have angry eyes. Therefore, about two percent less cute. You know how they're like malicious plague creatures. Yeah. They they're not like Cody's is like chaotic evil though. No, like they, they, they like they could have just been some wild boars. They, they are just some wild yeah. boars. They just happen to be plague wild boars, and it's like, oh yeah, you can burn them with the flame. But it's like, no, they've probably got little piglets, and well, they definitely have little. They, piglets. they definitely they, have little piglets. They're yeah. on the page. Yeah, but like they've got they've got a pig family. They, they... I should be less upset that this Justi- random pig is dying. Justice for the mutant pigs. That's, yeah, that's that's our position as sloggers. Like, if you didn't as sloggers, right? As sloggers, who very much were the ones that killed that pig. I can uh, not all sloggers, right? <laughs> I condemn that slogger who took because it like it could have been scared away. You know, it could have been dealt with in a non-lethal. There's probably a non-lethal slogger method. I'm dealing with that giant malicious poisonous pig. Uh, do you have any other particular points? I just really liked it. Yeah, because oh, like good. I liked it. It was a good standalone. It's not a standalone, but it was like, if this was the only one of these you read, I feel like you'd have a good time with mm-hmm. the comic. Let's move on. Oh dear, they're sloggers. Next in the in the prog is uh, Devil's Railroad Part 2. Mm. So, script by Peter Mulligan, art by Rufus Deglo, colours by Jose... Oh dear, it's, a, it's another... You got it last time. You said it in one last time. Villa Rubia. There you go. And letters by Jim Campbell. So, if you recall... I do. We ended up last time talking about how um, Constance... Constance is her name. I'm glad that you remember their names. Uh, had they, they were they were on a part of the journey. They'd, they'd taken a spaceship to get they to Earth. They were refugees from a war planet that was very much Ukraine-coded, I would say. Constance had blown up like a balloon. We were talking about in. Completion fetishes we, last we, time. We, yes, we were. That's how. That's the main memory from uh, that. Well, yeah, that is the main memory from that comic. I'll just say this is a hell of a two pages mm. back to back because we've got the last page of Helium and the first page of Devil's Railroad. So, first appearance of the Sloggers. Like a massive one-two punch mm. of like, dear God, they're Sloggers. Yeah, and then this fucking page. <laughs> Because we've got the that scene still playing out, mm. like Constance is inflated. She's she's also got like bumps like appearing in her now, yeah. Which like I think is supposed to be like the baby punching at her inside. Yeah, something's emerging from her. If you if you recall, the pl- story here is like she's pregnant. They need to get to Earth before she gives birth. But she's like just pregnant by yeah. like a week. There might have been some kind of time skip getting to the ship or whatever. But like it doesn't. She's not heavily pregnant. Or... She she's talking about uh, about like oh like what's happening like it's. Uh, uh, there's a regressive gene in my family which can result in super fast gestation. I like that that was put in there. Things will develop from that. But like, <sighs> I like that the, that was part of this. So that's basically it. Like, there's there's a lot of like panic shouting about what do you mean? 
and then fully grown man looking maybe more of a boy but like a, difficult to tell in the art a style gl- glowing eyed figure a demon child rips his way directly out of her stomach yeah full on the page blood splattering everywhere she's still alive and screaming i think this says more about me than it does you because like this is not necessarily what i thought you were going to talk about with the comic <laughs> um th- this didn't like because was this, this happened. I was like, oh yeah, the demon child ripped its way out of the, the mother. It didn't really leave an impression on me like that. Like I was just like, this, that was a thing that happened. I, I more want to talk about the aftermath of it. Uh, I also want to talk about the aftermath of it. Because mm. you say it was a thing that happened. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> once we turn the page, <laughs> we find out, no, it wasn't. It was all a dream. I couldn't believe that I was reading Neither that. could I. I couldn't believe. I want to say... Correct me if I'm wrong, Earthlets, sloggers. Correct me if I'm wrong. I want to say that's one of the big no-nos of writing cliffhangers. Like, it's a, it's a well-known fact that you shouldn't resolve a cliffhanger to a thing. By... With it being a fucking dream. Because, like, you get a lot of, like, oh, you shouldn't end your show. Like, the, the last thing shouldn't be, yeah. like, oh, it's all a dream. Or your film shouldn't end with it all being a dream. But, like, specifically if you're doing cliffhangers, you want the cliffhanger to follow on and resolve in, like, a natural or, like, a kind of a way that it's like, oh, that makes sense. Or, like, oh, I, like, that was surprising. But, like... You don't want to be like, well, the, the thing we set up, not real in the slightest. Not real in the slightest. I can't... Didn't matter is probably the thing that offends me most about it. The thing... I'll, I'll, I'm going to play defence on this one, because I, I like this strip. <laughs> um, so, it's characterization. That's a fallback, right? We can fall back on... I'm, so far, I'm unconvinced. It's characterization because the, the, the dad is anxious about his child. It's an anxiety dream. Yes, and like he—that's like a, that's characterization from like yeah. he, he's like a, he's a, like a shitty street punk man. He, like he expresses concern because it's, it's like a visualization of like, oh no, I'm going to be a dad, and like, what if this child is like completely out of control and I can't parent them and stuff? And it's conveyed in a couple of images. One of those images is either a, like a teen or a full grown man bursting his way out of this mother. I and mean, he says it's a total monster. A total monster, that's what he says. It's a total monster. So, like, I feel like it's up to the viewer, up to the listener, to understand or, you know, think for themselves if it's good characterization or not. But, I want to say that it is characterization. Like, like it, it didn't happen, but it's given us an insight into whatever this guy's... Lemonhead, or whatever the fuck he was called. Palamon. 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 I need to remember. He's a Palamine. Palamon. He's a Palamine, Palamon, and also is that Digimon. He is that Digimon. Yeah. I'm thinking about that a lot. So, like, it's characterization from... Do, does that sway you at all? Does that... Does that... Maybe... Because, like, I agree with you. Very gratuitous. Like, yeah. very, like... I've never... Like, I can't remember the last for, time. For one thing, like, traumatic images to put on the page. I mm-hmm. thought it was quite a horrible set of, of events. Really? I, I didn't feel that. Again, yeah. I think this is an admission of my guilt mm. more than that. I didn't feel anything. I was just like, oh, yeah. Mm. I mean, like, it's it's a chest burst from Alien. Yeah. Okay, we've, we've seen chest bursts yeah. in Alien, but, like, when you're not expecting one, mm. and when you don't know what the fuck's going on... Like, like I mean, it's... like, if it was real, and, and a guy just burst out of her and she was very dead... Yeah. I'd maybe find it more effective. You have this weird thing where, like, because something ends fine, yeah. you don't have any problem with all of the events that led up mm-hmm. to that, though. We had this whole conversation. Whole card, Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy 3. I think it's a, a good film. I think it's a very I'm good film. I'm glad you agree with me. We can move on. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, like, a bunch of traumatic events happen in that film. Yeah. And you think, well, because that character ends up fine, then mm. it's it's actually not all that depressing. It's backstory and it ends with a happy dance yeah. party ending. It's a good film. It's, I don't, an, it's an upbeat film, yeah. listeners. Uh, it, I, I wouldn't even necessarily disagree with you that... Well, I probably do disagree with you that it's an upbeat film overall. But it's got upbeat bits to it. It's like the, the, the story ends an upbeat thing. You're absolutely correct yeah. in your psychoanalysis of if something ends well, yeah. I'll think it ends well. And I won't necessarily consider that it was sad or horrible yeah. for a bit. But because... This character is fine, but like, like I say, I look at it more mm. as like tricks you're playing on the audience. Yeah, yeah, it's very, very yeah. like, deceitful. It's, it's very, very deceitful. It's very manipulative, and uh, it doesn't matter. Mm. So, also, did the artist just want to draw a woman <laughs> inflating? I, I is g- this is this just right. an out? No, this is a cover up for one time, right? You- just because someone inflates one time, you can't you can't peg them as an inflation fetish. I might, I might. We, you have to like. I'm like, not saying they are. I'm just saying that they might be. Look, if it happens again, <laughs> like if it happens twice, <laughs> then yes. But you, one time is just it's a part of the story. It, it's like again, for me, right? There's two, there's two factors to this because 
I agree with everything you're saying. Mm-hmm. And it is incredibly gratuitous. I, I don't remember a time in Toucan, while well, I've been reading it, where there's just been a, it's just a dream clip. Like, this is the, maybe the only time I can think of ever, because they don't do that, because it's bad. Yeah. But it's, it's one, it's characterization. I'm going to keep saying that, I'm going to die on the hill. The other thing is that, like, if it's characterization, it's characterizing him as a guy that I just don't like. Again, right? I, we talked about this last time, he was a bit of a shithead, he yeah. didn't want to go with the shelter, and then they got bombed. Yeah. Um, but he's like a street punky kind of guy, like, it's a kind of comedy drama, kind of a comic, like... He's he's kind of a a shitty dude, mm. and I'm I'm fine with that in two cards. Like it's and like, I wouldn't want everything to be that, but like as a comic, it, it's fun to see that kind of characterization. So far, we've only dealt with one page of this comic. The thing that happens, right, the page afterwards, yeah. is that there's a reveal. Mm-hmm. There's like it's it's not just that he was having a dream. No, there's a gas leak. There's a gas leak. The, the gas leak year. <laughs> I like that. Did you? How did you feel about the gas leak? Because that, that to me was like the one two of like characterization, and then like this is a thing that's happening that's been done to them. The fact that there is a gas leak and it is doing bad things to people's minds goes on to matter. Mm-hmm. So that's the best I could say about it. Goes it goes on to matter. But like this to me was like we're dealing with it in like a small box. It also though still just seems like an excuse. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. But like I guess I'm, I'm trying. I'm, I'm playing defense. Mm-hmm. Like I'm trying and spin it. Why I like it, why I like the gas leak is that it's a thing that they have to face on their journey. It's like an obstacle, it's a trial. Like they're they're in a ship. It's like a small cramped box ship. They're being like posted to like another planet. Yeah. And like like if the conceit of the strip is like they need to get from their planet to Earth and it's like a road trip thing and they have to deal with things and it's like episodic and they deal with different things each You need time. to have something to fill the pages. Fill the pages, but it's like Trials and Tribulations is like, oh, the Devil's Railway. Is it the Devil's Railway? Railroad. The Devil's Railroad is a bad time and you don't want to do it. Here's one of the reasons why you might get gassed like immediately, like the first thing that happens and then he goes to complain about it. The guy's like, yep. and it's not just he, like... He, but not just complain like, mm. oh, there's this gas. It's like my, my wife is pregnant and the gas could harm the baby. Yeah. And uh, the guy is... Uh, so, so like the rest of the, the, the comic I don't actually have that much of a problem. No, Because no. the guy's like, well, I could give you preferential treatment for more money. Yeah. Which is a very, like, good, like, people trafficking shitty thing to have that Th- guy this, do. This felt like the comedy drama. Yeah. But, like, you know, those people that died on that boat off of Greece, that there's a lot of news stories about, like, people, you know... Yeah, pe- people trafficking, like, I'm, I'm very pro-migrants, mm-hmm. I'm not necessarily pro-people trafficking, yeah. because those tend to be bad guys. But this, this is showing hazards, this is very, like, it's not like, it's not like super real, because it is a comedy thing. Mm-hmm. But it is showing real world things in a comic, and people will die just on those boats, getting to places, yep. even if they don't sink. And it, using the, it is just an excuse yep. to get that scene, to get the gas in. But I like that. That's yeah. You know, it, it could have been anything. I like that it tied in. I like that they even bothered to make an excuse. Yeah, but I, it, I know that's, that's not, a very bad taste for me. I was, I was shocked. The people trafficking guy, um, when uh, Palamon says he doesn't have any money and, like, hey, can you not just help her out? She's pregnant. Mm. Uh, hits him with an electro whip, plasma whip. Some kind of energy whip, yeah. yeah. And then he's going to get angry and beat him up, but Constance, I keep forgetting names, she uh, like is like, oh, no, you've got a temper. It's got into trouble before. Don't yeah. beat up that guy. Then they arrive on another planet, but it's not Earth. They've got to go to this planet to get it's to another It's like a, planet. a processing planet. You get like a big shot of like the sort of... They say that the uh, the the workers on this like mining colony they're at, they're like genetic engineered to have no concept of death. Yeah. And their life expectancy is six months. Yeah. And like I feel like you would get that, a concept of death after that six months. That can't be true, right? It's that's like a kind of gag world building but, thing. Yeah, it's, right? a, it's a bit gag world, but it's like it's a bad gag, because like that couldn't happen. Well like there there might be mass like, produced human why like, wouldn't workers. They, why wouldn't you use robots and they like, might not have we've not seen any robots. We've not seen any robots. He does have a robot hand though, and he in that, that yeah. one panel of them you get to see the robot hand a lot more. If their life expectancy is six months, are they all clones? Something like that. Have like they the... just got a bunch of, like, literal babies working the mines? <laughs> that is... is that why they don't have any concept of death? <laughs> As, like, as soon as you, like, you, you, like, understand death, like, you age out of the, the program yeah. and are killed, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't imagine it's a very safe thing to have a six-month-old work in your mind. Oh, but it's damn efficient. <laughs> They can swing a pickaxe like no one else. We don't see any of the workers, so Which we, is we don't get any of answers that. on this. 
Um, You'd want to see at least one of, like, a design of the worker, right? Like, as they're getting off to get on the next leg of the Devil's Railroad, uh, someone who looks confusingly like Constance... Confusingly. ...also has face tattoos, only the one Pikachu cheek on mm. her case, but, like, she does have a Pikachu cheek, so I was a bit like, holy shit, is this her? And, Again... And Palamon has died, because... I, di- I really liked... Her, her boyfriend, husband, partner... Uh, has has died from the gas in the gas leak. But not from the gas. Oh, true, yes. Like, he died because of the gas. He died because of the gas, but because he was having a nightmare, he ripped out his own throat. Yeah. They did show that, like, one of the other guys... Was, it, was he the same guy that was, like, worried about the plague? Because there was, like, a guy in one of the previous panels that was like, Oh, the plague, the plague is ravaging me, and he was, like, dreaming. And does, does she call it out as that? And that's why he, like, he was, like, clawing at his throat because he couldn't breathe or... It's certainly a similar character design. Plague sweeping our planets. Yeah, I'll, I'll say that's the same character. Yeah. And then there's just some sexual assault for a page. Yeah, because... Whip guy. Whip um, Because she's like, oh, my husband is dead. He's all like, oh, well, you know, I could keep you safe now. You know. Doesn't it say at one point, I'll be your man now something or something like, like that. that? Really horrible stuff. Yeah, and this is, of course, the trigger for Palamon to lose his temper as the foreshadow that he will and try and, try and kill him. And he wrestles the Electro Whip off him and jams it into the guy's eye. Mm -hmm. And then the woman who's lost her husband, again, somewhat confusingly, is like, Oh, why did you do that? I was just about to hit him with a telepathic mind numb. Yeah. He didn't need to save me after all. And also gets revealed that this guy was this favourite son of some gangster queen. And uh, now they're... Who who runs the Devil's Real Road. And now they're in huge trouble. They're in huge trouble. And that's the end. How did you feel about all of that, really? Like, did you... The rest of the comic is kind of fine. Yeah. Uh, A bit gross... Well, like, like it's all a bit gross. It's a bit like, gross, but in like, is it gross for a good cause? Because it's like this is a shitty real world thing. Yeah, people don't want to think about it, but like here it is in your comic that you buy in W. H. Smith. Like it's like, like, like look at this shit. I mean, I don't necessarily think that it's. I don't think it's like horrendously an issue. offensive that there is the threat of sexual violence mm. in this way. But I think that like it's it's maybe a bit harder stuff than it, you would expect. Like I could see someone being triggered potentially. Yeah. It's difficult because, like, baseline, it's kind of a comedy Mm -hmm. with drama bits. And it's hard to, like, I don't want to keep pegging it. Oh, it's a comedy and, like, dismissing it. But, like, there's funny bits. And there's that art, the art style, and you think, well, this is going to be like, There's bits that are meant to be funny. There's bits that are meant to be funny. Like, the inflation, presumably. I don't Uh, know. Do you find it funny? The. They are. They it's are funny doing, in a certain sense. They're doing stuff that's like, well, these are refugees, and this is things that happen to refugees. And, like,. I think it's important to like get that stuff out into the world, and that people will be exposed to this kind of thing through because co- that's the magic of two thousand AD. You didn't buy this comic to see this, mm-hmm. but you're getting to see it. And like the more people that get exposed, to that is, is probably a net good. I was never going to like it after it beat and switched me with the monster baby clawing its way out of the mother. And then that just didn't happen. I have never seen that done. Like I'm, tra- yeah. I'm racking my brain because like that's like a gag, like a screw the audience gag that you would yeah. see. In, like like the, the Simpsons does screw the audience gags like constantly, but like it doesn't. It's a different thing when it's like the cliffhanger, and then it's like pay me three pound sixty. The, the cliffhanger, which I was already ca- like calling it, I was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, but well, it was a very sudden like last like issue. A su- sudden like bizarre twisted twisted turn that looks like a fetish thing. Mm-hmm. That, like, then might go on to be a fetish thing. I don't know. And, and then it just didn't fucking happen. Right. We need a fetish counter. We need we need to sit week to week and be like, right, is there more inflation? There could be more inflation. This comic did also open with that page of shagging. Did open with that page of shagging. So, like, I don't know. It, it's it's not as... It's, I guess it's trying to be edgy. It's definitely trying to be edgy. But, like, no, no I know, like, a, you see when someone's trying to be edgy. I find it, like, just, like, that's not I find good. I do find it distasteful. Mm. But not to the extent where I'm necessarily ready to outright condemn the whole thing. Like it's, I, I'm that sturgeon even, must condemn. <laughs> that even sounds maybe a bit harder than the meaning to go. Yeah. But like, do, do you see what I, I get? Mean? I get what you mean. Like it's, I think because it's it's couched as like I, I like the art style and I like that it's like a comedy thing and I, li- I like that it's a refugee thing. There's like yeah. there's a lot of stuff that there's I like good about things. It. In it. There's a lot of things that I like about it and then like it, it happens to have inflation, <laughs> like. <laughs> I like that. I keep saying about the art side. See the page where they go with the the mining planet. Yeah. And see see how everything's like it's like cartoony, but there's lots of like texture to everything, like lots of little lines and like I really I really like it. I, Earthlets. If you know this artist, I forget who the artist Disraeli. is. Disraeli. Disraeli. Is it? It's not Disraeli. Oh no, that's the last one. Actually. Yeah, that's, the, that's this correct. is Deglo. Deglo. Uh, Rufus Deglo. If you've 
Let me know if Rufus Dayglow has done any work on Dread, because I'd like to see what his Dread stories look like, because I like this art style. I like his background work a lot. So if you've got any recommendations, let me know personally in the comments. And I think that's mainly all I've got for it. I liked it. Like I, 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 I didn't. I might rate it highly when we come to ratings. Well, we'll see that. I don't want to necessarily praise North Korea, but that, that is how you do a dictatorship, right? Next, we've got Fall of Dead World Retribution Part 2. Oh, God. Uh, script by Keck W. I think we talked about that last we time. We did. We didn't get any feedback on whether Keck was like a 4chan well, thing. It's at time of recording, that episode hasn't gone out. Ah, right. We, we that, couldn't that, possibly. That, that will be why. Yeah. Uh, art by Dave Kendall. Uh, letters by Simon Boland. We cut, at the start of this story, to a totally different set of Dead World's uh, Mega City Judges. Yes. Uh, who are in some kind of big brawl with a bunch of... I think they call them something like... They are called Deadheads. But it's like Deadhead Automatons or something. Well, they call them robots. Yeah, but they're, like they're clearly zombies. Yeah. They've got um, little pipes. See, yeah. like, there's little chip things. So I don't... They're, they're clearly like a mook that we're meant to know, having mm. read Dead World previously. Oh, the, these... If this was a Power Rangers show, these could definitely be putties. Yeah, because they all have the same somewhat simple suit design. Yeah. And skull heads. Yeah. That are on fire or glowing or something. Maybe glowing, but not on fire. I... Right. I like to start these reviews just saying, like, the thing that I liked, or the thing the thing okay. that struck me the most. See the design for the dead head? Yep. Probably the best thing in the strip. It's got a certain kind of alien grey look to it. There's, like... there's a lot of... See, when you see like art like this in 2000 AD, mm -hmm. I think it's a thing they need a lot of the time. It's like a, a thing I so, so associate with, where it's like sort of grimy, and it's like heavy metal sort of imagery. Like oh yeah, that's, that's the Dead World's That's the, the whole Dead World yeah. thing, and I like seeing it. And I like that they're putties. Mm -hmm. And then I know we'll go on to talk about it, but I didn't like this. I know, I know you're bad. I know how you're. You don't like Dead World. Uh, I might be agreeing with you wholeheartedly on this one. Well, I will go through the plots because I can this time. Okay. So there's this fight. Uh, one of the judges who does have a name, but I can't really be particularly bothered to to remember. Oh, it's that, Eastwood. Eastwood. Well, this is ooh, this is the problem with it because you know how you say we cut from a different from the previous group of Dead yeah. World to this. I had like no knowledge about these guys. And I, I have read a previous Dead World thing where these guys were in it. I might have forgotten they were different guys. That's the thing, right? Yeah. There are other judges, and like 2000 AD has a problem a lot of the time where like like if there's a lot of judges doing judges things. Yeah. Like if it's dread, you know it's dread. But like if it's other judges and you're switching between them, it's like they're, they're just judges. Sometimes they have different outfits. Sometimes they have different variations on the judge. Outfit. Well, that's that's why the other judges take their helmet off. Yeah, but like so you can have a face to recognize. But these guys were just judges, and like I I didn't know about them. I didn't recognize them, and it, they were talking about other judges yeah. in the story. I, I agree. I don't think that matters to this particular mm. strip because it's it's an action strip this time. Yeah. So they're they're having this fight. They're talking about how they don't have any weapons. They need to have something a bit better than a D stick because they're using the word D stick. Don't know if all the judges like truncheons are called D sticks or because I, I just recognised that because we were talking about what do you call that? Is that a night stick? Is that a truncheon? Is that do, stick? do judges in the real the main universe have night sticks and judges in the dreadful? It might be that. Do they yeah. have D sticks because it's Earth fucking three? Yeah, it might be that. But so one of them is like a D and D rogue, so just has some knives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, go over there and distract them. So she does, she runs through, she stabs them a bunch, and she's running towards their... How did you feel about that, bringing up D&D? Because, &D? like, see when I saw her doing that? I was yeah. like, ooh, mistake there. You don't, you don't want to be doing piercing or slashing on these... Zombies. Yeah, you want to be doing bludgeoning, right? I mean, uh, you want to be doing bludgeoning on a skeleton. Well, that, well they are they're skeletons. They're, they're zombies, but they're, they're, they've got skeleton heads. They do just have skull heads, yeah. yeah. Like, you, you want to, you, like, what are you doing? Like, physically think it's... Like, you stabbing she, a knife in, at, like, a bony skull. In the only panel where we see, like, damage being done, mm -hmm. uh, she, she does appear to be stabbing the skull head itself so what? it's not what? even like the type of thing where like she's she's getting a fleshy bit yeah it's like i'm not a, like a realist like i don't read things like well this is clearly this is clearly factually inaccurate yeah. but like the image of her like stabbing at, like a bones it's not even like she's like stabbing and like breaking and like she's just sort of like I think flinking a knife on like the non-flesh of a skull she's maybe knocked some teeth out 
as well. I think there was a panel of like some, but like uh, then, right? What are you doing? They're like an undead skeleton skull man. Oh no, he's lost some teeth. But she's she's like distracting them and bringing the fight to her Mm. and moving closer towards the bite. Which then the other judge that sent her to do that is able to remotely detonate. That is a fair point. If I was one of these skeleton men, I'd be like, "How the fuck is she?" I would. I'd be properly distracted. If I was a skull man and someone was coming at my skull face with some <laughs> knives. But, so the bike blows up. And I do remember from previous stories that like he was talking to this bike like it was his wife or something. <laughs> I'm glad that you remember because I, I must have not read those. That, that, that will be important to this particular strip because like they blow up the, the, the bike. and It's a Mark the, 1 bike. All of the deadheads with it. Well, it's got to be old because he can't... I think it was something like you can't update the firmware because <laughs> that'll get rid of the personalities installed that is a bit like his wife. We have a history with bikes that are people. Oh, that's true. I hadn't even considered that. So does that make you like Dead World even more now that there's a slight Kamen Rider Black reference? I'll keep getting through the, the story. So the bike's blown up and all the dead... Deadites, deadheads. They're very deadites, and, aren't they? Uh, they are, yeah. The the judge who was fighting him with knives gets up because she um she's not been killed, but she she is angry because she's like, you fucking could have killed me with that yeah. bomb. And he's like, yeah, well, I didn't. So let's get going. I'm, I'm, he was like, I'm sure the the bodies of the dead skeleton men would have cushioned the yeah. blow or some action movie. He, he did say that that like their their bodies would have absorbed the shock. He was doing some banter, but like, what the fuck are you <laughs> talking about? He's then sad. Because he's blown up his butt, and I'm yep. like, maybe I like this because I remembered what it was from because they make a point of it, mm-hmm. and you haven't read that story. Or I, I haven't read the story, but also I felt like the art when we get to the moment was a bit mm. confusing. He's like, I'm a bit sad because my bike's been blown up. It had something that was important to me in it, mm. and I think he, he says it was something of, of Leah's or whatever. And then another zombie just comes like, ah, and like he he just batters it away with his, I think with his just his fist. Well, well this is the, that was the panel. I was like, what what's happening here? Because it didn't seem like he was bad. Like it was a very confusing actual one panel of what is this interaction between the the, the good judge and this villain? Because we know he gets a thing from the yeah. mook, but the, I didn't understand how he was doing it. Or like the mook, the villain has got something sticking out of his head, and Eastwood grabs it and picks it, and it's 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 the badge of Lee, mm. who uh, was his wife, or at least romantic interest. And uh, and like he, he saved it, even though the bike's been blown up, so he's still yeah. got the badge. So he's he's got the the thing that was important to him. He saved his gimmick from his bike. And then one last thing happens, which is that a uh, a Soviet steamroller just batters its way into frame. Yeah, like the comic ends with a like, yeah. and next time. Oh, so solve war rulers exclamation. Yeah. Mark. So I'm gonna shock you now, Craig. Oh no, tables flipped. I actually quite liked this one. <gasps> What has happened to us? The dynamic has completely shifted. Something in a Dead World story actually happened. <laughs> See, I didn't. I didn't. As someone who hadn't read the previous stuff with this dead wife judge, yeah, I didn't. I, like any time they try, they could and... certainly have done it better. Like because mm. the only reason why I thought that the stuff with the the badge had any merit to it at mm. all is because I kind of remembered what it was about. Yeah, like that bike can talk. And they didn't have the bike talk to mm. remind you what that whole thing is. Yeah. It could have been done better. But even without that, there's still an action scene. There's an action scene, which we're, we're always praising when there is action and there's like good balance. Yeah. And like, I like the action scene, although I've, I did go on at length about what the fuck knives. Yeah. And I like their designs. I, it's any time you're trying to pull like emotion from a judge about other judges and it's like a non-Judge Dread character. Like, judge Dread doesn't show emotion because that's his character. Yeah. Right? Dread sort of gets a pass as like the most fascist horrible bastard because he's Dread. Yeah, that's so, the like, important thing about him. But see when they're trying to like do pathos and stuff from like other judges and that, just fuck off. Like, <laughs> like, you, like I, I don't give a fuck about you. You're some Nazi. And these Nazis are like super Nazis from the Hell Dimension. They, well, it's not the Hell Dimension yet. It's but just a different world that's quite similar. They're fighting to like reestablish the hell on Earth that is Mega City One. No, no. Well, I guess yes, that is Mega City One. They're, they're, Their baseline they're, is they're to fighting get... to to get back to the normal that is a dystopia. Yeah. yeah. So like any time, which I think is fun. Yeah. Like, but like they're trying to pull emotion from it. And like fuck off! I don't care about you or your wife. I don't particularly care about Judge Eastwood either. Yeah. <laughs> but he has like one thing that I know about him mm. that they're trying to make a story out of. They are trying to make a story. Like like they do make a story out of yeah. it. It's just 
I don't particularly give a fuck yeah. about. Like, again, I feel like mainly the things I like about Dead World are the art. The art's still lovely and yeah, like, yeah. It's still very like watercolor. It's not water, very but detailed, oils. but sometimes I think that can be a weakness rather than a strength. Mm. Because as you were saying about like, I can't really work out what the particular piece of action is when that zombie that's got a, mm. a badge in its skull. I just had to, I had to reread it to see yeah. that the badge was there, and then like, I did, it wasn't like a clear panel of them like, oh, he's got a badge in his skull, it, let me take it out. Yeah, it was just like, it, what, what is happening it's, it's, here? Like I say, it's very detailed, so like, it's not as readable. Mm-hmm. You know, everything looks important, yeah, so yeah, your yeah. eye can't focus in on the one thing that's clearly the important thing. Like, I, I do think this was much better than the previous Brog. Yeah. I do think it was, because la- last week it was like, let's go do a thing. No, let's not do that thing. Or, and then they were like, well, let's go do the thing. Mm-hmm. This did have an action scene that had character. A thing happened, and I'll actually take points away from it, because the thing that happened was not the thing that they spent all prog last time <laughs> deciding to do. I am a little bit concerned, because I didn't realise, because what I thought Dead World was, was that cast of characters we saw last week, Yeah, and then occasionally they would do, like, one-off, let's see what the fucking Judge Fire is up to or yeah. stuff. Which I like, I like those, let's see what Judge Fire is up to. Now knowing that there's, like, two protagonist groups at least and we'll be intercutting between them between yeah. and it's like okay we're slowing down even further on a, like a series that's already quite slow that's very much my thoughts on Fall of Dead World as a whole yeah yeah I mean I, I like those skeleton men I like them a lot I thought they looked cool they're, they're nothing crazy but like I, it was a nice design yeah is that enough to see it will it'll be, it, it won't be this forever will well it? like it, we'll see <laughs> though again back to to shock you I will not be rating this last this bro whoa Interesting. I will be rating it second. <laughs> it's climbing up the ranks. <laughs> That's what? What four, three, or four progs until it's your number one? <laughs> I don't, well, I'll give it a chance. Look, I suppose. I think there's an infinite possibility that Dead World could be your number one at some point. Oh, maybe I mean, not maybe. this. Not this year. Yeah. But if it goes on forever, and it does threaten to continue to go on forever. Yeah. Maybe. But. That's all I've got to say about it. I probably came across as very negative there. I don't mean it. It's... I do. Yeah, I don't but like you liked Dead it. World. I like this Dead World. You don't like Dead World, but you like this Dead yeah. World. There's always a bigger pig. The last uh, comic in the prog is Feral and Foe, mm. uh, Bad Godsburg, Goodsburg. Good- I do, do this every, every time. time. I do this every time. It- I it's don't got, even remember what it is now. It's got an E in it. You've it infiltrated look, my mind. It's got an E in it that, that like, throws me off. Yeah. Because it's god e Zberg. Ye old Godsburg. Is it Goodiesburg? Is it Goodsburg? It's difficult, right? Because normally I'd say it doesn't matter. <laughs> but I would say it doesn't matter. Move on with your life. But everything could be a pun. It is a Dan Abnett comic. It's a Dan Abnett comic. And there are a lot of other puns in this comic. It's part three anyway. Yeah. Script is by Dan Abnett. Uh, Art is by Richard Elson and letters are by Jim Campbell. We built up to a fight last issue. Mm -hmm. Uh, They came across a bunch of kobold'kin and uh, now they're they're fighting it. So, Bood, is that his name? Bood, the the, the necromancer. The the... Malchemist. The Malchemist, As I have been reminded, that's what his magical class is called. They do call it out in this. Uh, him and uh, one of the the like wretch finder guys and the big orc like guy with a big gun. The big guy with the gun. Yeah. Should, should we call it out the now or um, when uh, we get to it? I mean, it's it's almost immediate. There's there's like the the two guys that aren't the guy with the gun are fighting. Food. I do th- want to point out on the very first panel. Yeah. Like ma- green magicy rays are coming out of Bode's hand because mm-hmm. he's doing magic attacks. It's like an orifice on his hand. One of them. Is there an orifice? On his see, hand? see, like, see where like the energy's coming out. It's not just like energy's coming out he's got like an opening in his palm because it's like it's gross malchemical magic Hmm. Uh, it might not be that first page but there's definitely because i was looking at it there's like there's like an orifice it's great i'll look out for it on the very first panel Mm. like he's not just blasting lasers at people one of the the green rays is specifically scooping the brain (laughs) out of one of the like he's he's using telekinesis or whatever Uh to like just pull the brain out of one of these (laughs) things heads you know normally i'm not into gore no you know but like when it's against some comedy chaotic evil rat monkey men i also just think it's inherently funny that he's just like just the brain just like (laughs) that's him dead Well, like that, that because he's a alchemist, and like he's he's a gross necromancer. Yeah. Like, like that's a part of his character, and it's good. Like an action scene could just be you shooting a guy. Or it's it. also just like I, th- I feel like this is just 
Richard Elson having fun because yeah. it's like it's uh, it, the, like the, the notes for what to draw here could just be like these characters fight. He blasted them. He started blasting. Yeah, them, like. and and Richard Elson's clearly just been like, oh, you know what would be funny? Yeah, if he was just like popping this guy's brain out. But yeah, so that was the image they used to promote this story, by the way. <laughs> See on their Twitter. <laughs> Like, they had little screenshots of, like, tune in this week for Feral and Foe, and it was, like, a zoomed-in shot of him blasting, and then just a brain, like, splat. <laughs> you didn't even see where it was coming from because of the crop. Well, if you didn't see the, where it was coming from, then it's not as funny to me. It's intriguing, though. Like, mm. where's this brain coming from? <laughs> They're bantering. The guy with the big gun is saying, like, oh, for fuck's sake, stop stop complaining. Mm. We're foe takers. You know, this is, this is what we're here for. And then he just takes his big gun, and there's, like, a big panel of him just, like, blasting it. At the whole stairs. I don't know if it's called out there, mm-hmm. but I realised that he's not a guy with a big gun. He's a woman with a big gun. Oh, really? Oh! You know what? I'm not sure. I, I think they say you, she. Do they? I, I think it's in the dialogue. And I was like, what do you mean? And then I looked at it. And it's just because she's like... Oh, yeah, pr- she's right. Yeah. And I was like, Get she, she. And, but she is, and she, she's, she's an absolute tank. And that is us just assume, assuming the gender yeah, of very this true. fucking tank. Well, I'm very sure, uh, sorry to this orcish character mm. who I uh, don't even remember the name of. They're cool, though. They, they they are very cool. She's very cool. What I was saying about, like, I'm not sure, it's because mm. when you pointed that out, I was looking at the, the artwork of the, the firing of the big gun. Yeah. The armor does kind of appear to be boob armor in that. I believe she's got breasts, but, like, because she's holding a gun, like, her arms are across her chest. It, it's the type of thing where, like, it could be boob armor, it could just be, like, the pose... Happens mm-hmm. to show off the pectoral. Bits. Exactly, and like, yeah, I, I think she's a cool character, and I, um, I like. Does she say for feck's sake? People she say does, she does say feck me. She says like, and like, feck me, you two. We're man- mandated foo takers for the crown, and uh, this is this is a wretch purge. Let's start purging, shall we? Yeah, and like, she gets up and starts blasting. Yeah, and like that was after she took like, what was it like splinters or like needles to like the chest? Yeah, like, she trigger- was downed, triggered the trap, or just got shot by a bunch of their bows. That was, it was a bit unclear. Similar problem to that actually, because the reason why I thought that was a trap, but then it might not have been, yeah. was because the shot of her taking the damage was just like. A reaction, like she it was just back. yeah, you, like you were just looking at her, mm. and then like you see the thing. <laughs> that was a page turn reveal. Yeah, that you see the thing that presumably dealt the damage, and it's the crowd of Kobold again. Yeah. Uh, in this one, I said that she blasts the big gun and like clears the whole stairs. You would only really know that from the dialogue mm. because they they say like, oh, she's cleared the stairs. Let's go. The image is just like a big gun blast at the corner of the panel. And like, there's a bit of a suggestion of what she's firing Mm. at. Like, you can see some of the hands and weapons of the koboldkin. I'm I'm happy to. I feel Mm. if I'm if I'm going to be criticizing Richard (laughs) Elson, go for it. I feel that if you're wanting to get across the power of this big gun, which Mm. is I think the goal, you would want to have not just seeing it being a big gun shooting. You'd want to see the effects of it. On panel. I think it's an economy thing because it's five pages mm. and you're, you're getting your half a page. I think it's like a splash of the, the gun. Yeah, it's, like, it's most of that page. And that, that like, most of a page in two cards is huge because it's not, you're not getting 22 pages, you're getting five. And like doing a thing and then having a character say that you're like, yep, that thing was effective is a very like economical, mm-hmm. let's move on. And I'm glad they did because there's stuff that happens that they pack yeah. into this comic that I'm happy is in there. Speaking of, we then cut to Foe Taker Danica, or as Wretch Finder Danica. The, that is uh, the, the one that you've been saying as a Jenny Joyce-like character. Jenny Joyce? She's like, she meets the, uh, not, I guess, like, is this energy not Jenny Joyce talking to Sister Michael? So it is quite Sister Michael because of the size and shape of the yeah. way she finds. So she finds, like, basically the housekeeper mm-hmm. of Goodsburg. Who's like eight foot tall. She's very big. Yeah. I particularly got a um the fairy godmother from Cinderella vibe from her. Okay. If the fairy godmother from Cinderella could throw you across a park. <laughs> she can't like um what was the character in Matilda? Uh yeah. Trunchable Trun- Trunchable. Sort Miss of Trunchable. Trunchable energy and she's kinda of not nun like, but she's isn't she wearing that sort of medieval women's wear where her hair is. She's got that see. hair covering thing. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah, you know, I guess made Mary in, in things. I really like the Jenny Joyce is gone to be like, get the mirror. She well she she's she's specifically like, I am here, I've invoked martial lore. Says it again. Says it again. And uh I have the authority to basically do whatever I want while we're clearing out the monsters. Get out Dumbledore. Yeah, get the the, the leader, the mayor, whoever is in charge. Yeah. Like, get them here now. And then uh, Miss Trunchbull slash Fairy Godmother slash Sister Michael is like, No. No. Don't know who you are, but I don't fucking care. Piss off. 
Mm-hmm. She, she actually, I believe, says do one. She does. She says she does say do one. Yeah. Well, I'm Mrs. Oatfl- Oftlack. Mrs. Oftlack. Oftlack. What I'll does she lack? That. She oft lacks something. Uh, politeness, maybe. Hmm. Anyway, I'm Mrs. Oftlack. Uh, I'm the palace. Uh, oh, what's that word? Chatelaine. Ch- yeah, yeah Chatelaine or something. She has a whole thing, right? She has a whole spiel. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm the palace Chatelaine. And you can do what you can do. Like any time British slang and jargon comes up, and like it's constant. Yeah. But like, it, I feel like we should call it out more because it's great. It's, it's a key part of why Feral Info is good. Mm. I would say. I really like that interaction with her and Jenny Joyce because yeah. she has like a very like she's like get the mayor out because like there's fucking monkey goblins in the cellar. And, like, whatever else. Also, we need to have this Iron Golem looked at. Yeah, I've forgotten about the Iron Golem. Yeah. The comic might have forgot about the Iron Golem as well. <laughs> I don't think it is. I've got theories. Well, they've not mentioned it. There's been action scenes happening. Yeah. But she's like, literally, there's fucking blood porn happening out there. Yeah. Like, and like, she's like, the character has some reasons why the guy can't come out. He's old. Well, it's, it's it's like he he came here because he retired, yeah, and he spends so much of his time and energy working out like the magical secrets of the of the universe, yeah. Uh, he doesn't get enough sleep, and when he's because he's he's asleep apparently, yeah, and like uh, so so I don't want him to be woken up when he finally does get yeah. some. So well, go and sort out those monsters, then we'll talk. I, what I really liked about the interaction was. That's somewhat unreasonable because, like I say, a bloodborne <laughs> it's is. It's very unreasonable, a, I think. A bloodborne is happening, but Jenny Joyce is like, okay then! Like, like she just sort of concedes to this giant yeah, woman's demand. Like, like, I, I was not expecting her to just give in like yeah, that. I found that very natural and funny. <laughs> yeah. Because it's just like, oh, okay, right. Like, like, it's, not, it's not like, I am a rich finder. Yeah. I have invoked martial lore. I am in charge. I have a sword. I have a I know s- you're, like, I have massive. A, I have a sword. <laughs> I have martial lore, and I have a coded psychopathic bob cut. <laughs> like, like, how is she not like immediately stabbing her in the back when that woman like turns to go? Like, it's just like she just accepts that. Like, no, okay, those are reasons. Like, yeah, well, she's, she's like, oh, okay, I, I guess, I guess we will just sort out yeah. the monsters then. I don't know if other people would find that dumb or a disappointment, but I loved that. Like, I, I think it is dumb, but I also loved it. But like, dumb in a great way. Good dumb. Uh, I will sidetrack us by talking about my theories. Go on. I want to hear them. This is so, why I'm here. Uh, the reason why they are here in the first place mm. is because they found some guys with a bunch of magical treasure, yeah. including a very powerful, presumably iron golem, mm-hmm. and of unknown origin. Of one, unknown origin, importantly. And they're like, okay, well, let's go to the magic city to like have it looked at and find out where it's get come the from. boys in the lab to go over it. They get to the magic city. It's overrun by monsters. The Dumbledore equivalent is nowhere to be found. Someone who claims to be like working for him is preventing the authorities' access to uh, him. That's true. I wasn't considering that it could be like an inside job kind the, of thing. The right? thing that he is supposed to be involved with is working out what is like good, like lordly, crown worthy magic, and what is like evil, nasty people. Other people malchemy. magic. Yeah. So yeah, it, it, clearly the magic treasures come from here. Yeah. I think. You, but so you, think iron, you think the Iron Golem is from here? Like, is I it, think the Iron Golem came from here and mm, like is like a like a black site project kind of thing. Like a, I, th- I think that the the head wizard guy will probably have been uh, worm tongued <laughs> into like I love a good worm tongue. Yeah. Worm tongue's up there with an evil vizier for me. He's like he's not an evil vizier, but he's like a side evil vizier. Like he's <laughs> very much like adjacent to evil I vizier. I would say is worm tongue not like almost the like our typical evil vizier? No, he's not got a big hat and like he's not got a staff. Like I guess like in terms of No, because like he's not really snatching power from selfness. He's not doing like a power play. Like I guess he well, is. Well he is. But, like, like he but... is in charge because he makes the king of Rohan like basically an invalid who he only listens to him. Like shit though. <laughs> like you have to have a certain level of style to be an evil vizier. And like what he's doing, right? It might be technical evil vizier work, but it is not good evil vizier work. Even mm. though it might be competent evil vizier work, and it might be like the most like competent evil vizier work in cinema, as far because like other evil viziers often die. Well, and, so does he. Doesn't I it? know, but like he he does get a long stretch of like running Rohan or whatever. But like mm. usually the plan happens and fails within the course of the film. But like in Rohan, it's however many years fucking worm tongues been like, but he dresses like shit. Doesn't have a big staff. Rank him low. 
Come back next time. Uh, how, for my... how would you rank, rank uh, Mrs. Oftlack if she does indeed turn out to be the evil quite vizier? high? Because like, <laughs> she is eight foot tall. Like she might not actually, because I don't know the scale. We've called of... a lot of people out as being eight foot I, tall. Specifically, like, I fucking love people that are eight foot tall. Space Marines mainly. Seven feet tall. Not impressed. No, eight six, feet tall. Eight feet tall. Now we're t- she's eight feet tall and also like four feet wide. Like she, <laughs> she, she looks like. There could be a reveal where, like, she's like a monk or a fighter or something. Like, like the given class that of... we've now found out that the orc or whatever they're called uh, character on board is a woman. Yeah, that's a match I want to see. Yeah, that'd be great. Like, ta- like they're both tanks or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> just like... but it's just that she's like a maid looking maid, a juggernaut versus the blob fight. <laughs> like, just to stand still. But um, no, good body work. Like from Richard Elson. Like, oh the yeah, the, the and... character designs are fucking fantastic. Yeah. They always have been, but like, there's some some real standouts here. There's one last scene. Mm-hmm. So oh, there's one last scene. Yeah. yeah. So the uh, the the blue chainmail haired woman who I should know the name of but the I don't, dark elf and the uh, Draco Natal guy mm-hmm. who again like I feel like if I saw his name I would be like oh yeah that's his name you that's need a good to name because it was pointed out to me that in original Star Trek they mentioned their names all the time yeah and that's how you got to know Sulu and like Uhura is because they kept saying the names. And I feel like that's a thing. It might not be a very natural thing, but you should do it because then I'll remember your bloody name. Blue woman is called a uh, wrath child because mm. that's what the dragon needle says. A child um, of wrath. Having a look to see if uh, his name gets called up. Tusk. His name's Tusk. Oh, he's called Tusk. Is he? He's called Tusk, and huh. he does. He does kind of have tusks. Well, he's a dragon, isn't he? So. Tusk. Well, he's not really a dragon. Well, he's, like a, this... he's a dragonborn equivalent. He is a dragonborn equivalent, but he looks like a goblin man. He does look like they've, they've sort of remixed a lot of the races because kobolds aren't monkey men. Anyway, um, so they are in a room full of magical objects. Wraith Child is like, oh, I've got a bad feeling here. And mm. so he's like, well, that's magical objects for you. They, they give up weird vibes. There's, there's a lot of them and they're generating a lot of bad vibes. Yeah, and she's like, that's not just that though. Like, There's like a low like buzzing kind of whispery noise. <laughs> I can't quite place it. Mm. And uh, then, then Tusk finds the guy that they're looking for because they're looking for a specific guy. Can't remember that they were looking for a specific guy, but they Do, are. Don't remember that. Also, it was hard to tell because, like, when they find him, the guy's head isn't there. No, nope. it, it's exploded. So they they find him and they're like, "Oh shit, it's Godfrey." And uh, Tusk says he's quite dead. <laughs> to which Rithjob uh, responds with, "I'll say his feckin' head's exploded. <laughs> you didn't need to check, Tusk." Why are you checking his pulse? Yeah, he be, doesn't have to just go in for a pulse reading. He's, he's just bits of viscera and like, ugh. And then Tusk is like, "Oh, I know this. He's, his head's exploded from having too much knowledge shoved in there." I fucking love everything about this. That's so good. <laughs> and he's like, "This could be the work of an owl boar." An owl boar. <laughs> Amazing! <laughs> this last page, right? Like, because it's it's like a reveal. It's like them describing what an owl boar is, yeah. and also, so we we see we see the owl boar. Oh, there's there's where to start. There's an owl boar. The la- like this is an amazing yeah. last page of a comic and a last page of the prog. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. So first of all, an owl bear, as you might know, if you only knew Dungeons and Dragons from that film that came out recently this, this year, year, I think it was this year. Uh, they have an owl bear in that. The druid turns into an owl bear, and an owl bear is a classic silly D and D monster, which is half owl, half bear. Picture it in your minds, dear listeners. Yeah. It's a giant owl that's got big claws like a bear. So they've taken that design and they've made it into a pun because it's an owl boar, and it's that's what's making the whispering noises that they were here that they were there's talking a- about because it's just whispering some facts. The facts are amazing. <laughs> it's just hiding. Presumably, it's like invisible or has like a a, a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy somebody else's problem feed. Yeah, because like it's, it's it's massive and yeah, it's it, just there. It's like the si- It's bigger than an owl bear. It's got a huge fucking head. Is it wearing a little hat? Like, is he a little nerd owl? Like, because he's a, he's a boar. Like, I don't see a hat. Like, see the see the top of his or is that like part of I his? I think that's fur? just his feathers. I took it as like he's wearing like a little nerd hat, but like he's he's whispering lots of facts. It's like a three like tiered speech bubble thing mm-hmm. where like it's very faint writing and it gets stronger and he's just listing in world facts yeah. about like random like trees and like 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 the size of the nuts of this tree yeah. and how it's like 
was categorized by King whatever the third. Yeah, and like the concept is, it fills your head with so many facts that your head your head explodes. Head explodes. And not only that, but there's a secondary effect where because it's boring you with these facts, you fall asleep, so you can't do anything about it. <laughs> the characters are getting more like they're yawning between yeah. sentences, and like they're just gonna fall asleep in this room and have their heads head explode. explode. I would be disappointed. I get. I don't want the. See, I like both of them. Like, yeah. One, one of them's a main character. Like one of them is like one. One of them was a starring character in the last mm. uh, group of feral and foes. And like one of them's the this um, dragonborn equivalent. Yeah. Of, and they've had good dialogue together. And I would be sad. If... Tusk, the dragonborn yeah. equivalent, is uh, my probably my favorite character design of the whole lot of the mm. new characters. Right. Uh, I, I really like the way he looks, even though it's like a sort of generic skeletory looking. Yeah. Fancy sword He's man. Got a good character as well because yeah. they were like they were asking about his lineage and he was like, "Well, fuck off." Yeah, and also like you know, yeah, I, kn- I know a few things from books. And are you really taking the piss out of me for that? Are you, 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 are you taking the piss out of me for knowing a thing? Yeah, I don't want him to his head to explode, but I would feel cheated if I didn't see the owl or make someone's head <laughs> explode on panel. I know it's about this. Yeah, there was a thing in the last thriller before the one that we covered. Mm. There was like an information demon in that. Yeah, that was basically the same concept. Same concept. Did he? Did he make their heads explode? Or no? But he was a, a demon of random information, mm. and every time he was on panel, he would just start saying things I thought I'd that were seen like something. like obscure facts. I, thought I'd, I felt like I'd felt yeah. known something about this. Pre- he recently. was only able to be defeated because he was asked to read out the entire digits of pi. Right. Which is impossible because it goes yeah. on for infinity. And like that's a similar kind of thing. I think he was like infecting people by telling them facts. That's how um that's how Captain Kirk would resolve that situation. Like Yeah. Like it, he was a demon, but it's like you're basically a robot AI thing. I'm yeah. just gonna do your wee paradox and <laughs> have your And there you go. There you go, job you go done. Beep boop, you're dead. I really liked this prog. Yeah, it was good. It was a good, was a good one. The, my notes about it overall is that it was a fast read. Like I, yeah. I went through it very quickly, and I was like, normally when that happens, I rate progs lower because mm. I like I like progs to be dense, multi-panelled, and like you, you sit and you read it, and it takes half an hour or whatever. Um, this was very brisk, but the content in it I really liked. I would absolutely agree. Um, uh, really enjoyed my time with this one, mm-hmm. even though some of the strips kind well more than kind of annoyed me. Well, there was like two, yeah. two out of three that were like kind of. Well, speaking of that, yeah. can you remember which one of us did the rankings first? I last did time? the rankings first last time. Okay, as I'll... far as you know. As far as I know, uh, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't. Anymore. First of all, the rankings don't matter. No, it's just a bit of fun. It's just a bit. Of fun. Please don't hate us. But I'll, I'll give you my rankings. Mm. Number one, Feral Info. Yes. Really I, like that Feral Info. Hard agree. You're never going to go banned with an owl boar. No. Um, it's a dumb... It's a great pun. There were three different scenes in that, like, f- five page Five pages? Strip. It would have been five pages. Uh, yeah. and, and they were all really good and fun. Mm-hmm. They're into it. Like, they're into the thick of, like, exploring this dungeon, yeah. basically. And... It's, uh, it was just really good. I, yeah. Like, I had one note for Richard Elson showing how, what the gun was doing. <laughs> Other than that, perfect. Yeah. Number two, uh, I would put Dread. Okay. I would put Dread above Helium. Mm-hmm. And I would put Dread directly above Helium, because Helium's my number three. Okay. But uh, I like Dread. I like that whole... I, I liked that interaction with him and the pilot mm-hmm. a lot. That is true. I'm thinking about my rankings. Yeah. Like, that interaction with the pilot was in there. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I thought that like just seeing some soft judges was quite cool. It's always fun to see some soft. Exploring the setting, East mm. Meg Two, Helium was really good, but it did have the sloggers. It did have the sloggers, right? It did. This have is the a hard one to rank. Yeah, because like you're saying, it's a really good prog. Yeah. A lot of, the, a lot of these are five star stories, mm. as far as I'm concerned. But so Helium, I, I did like, but I thought it had a little bit less substance than the Dread did. It was more fun. It had more fun. It was like... That I com- had quite a lot of fun with Dread. Okay. I realised that it's a boring story and I'm a boring person. So no, no. Why. No one's saying you're a boring person. I'm saying I'm boring. Okay. Second to last, as I said, Fall of Dead World. Mm. Uh, I thought that was an entirely enjoyable single issue of an ongoing story, mm-hmm. which is far more than I can usually see a Fall of uh, Dead World. Well, as we were saying in the segment, it's climbing up the rankings. I'm going <laughs> to watch very closely. I'm very, like, if they, Listen, if they can turn Fall of Dead World around for me, uh-huh. then I'm for it. We're, we're Let's not, see it. We're not like comedy 2000s haters. No. Like, we don't, we're not here to hate on them. I want these comics to be good, actually. Yeah. 
And uh, it's just that I think that Dead World very rarely has been, for, in my opinion. And finally, uh, uh, The Devil's Railroad. I'm gonna because a... they can fuck off with that inflation baby dream. The inflation baby dream is a dark scene that will hang over the rest of the comic, probably. Yeah. Judging the quality of it as we go. Um, am I going to be very different? Because, I mean, Fair and Foe, number one. Yeah. It's indisputable. I think, yeah, it's inarguable that that's the best comic in this prog. Of quite good comics. I think I'm Feral and Foe, and then Helium. Okay, fair. And then Dread. Yep. Feral and Foe, Helium. I'm interested in your last two. This is the thing, because, like, Feral and Foe, Helium. I liked Helium more than I liked Dread, mm -hmm. but I did like Dread because of the, the Dread interaction. Uh, Were you going to rank, rank Dread below Devil's Railroad? Uh, I think I was. I think I was. And I'm maybe emotionally might still do. Oof, okay. It's because it had a lot of, like, who are you, woman, domino woman? I don't know you. Am I meant to know you? And, like, we've talked about this previous progs where, like, that shouldn't matter because, like, the thing that's happening on the page should be cool and fun enough that it doesn't matter that you have no connection with them. For me, it was. Yeah. But in this, it was just some, like, sort of action movie spy stuff. And, mm -hmm. like, I, I don't know. I don't know about this. But, like... I, I can't rank that dread scene any lower. Um, so Devil's Railroad and then Dead World for me. But emotionally, I might have to put <laughs> dread below. De I like Devil's Railroad. Like that opener is shocking, not for the pregnancy right explosion. reasons, not for the right reasons, but for the all just a dream. But like, we went through it in the yeah. segment. I, I, uh, fair on foe. Yeah, helium. Yeah, Devil's Railroad. You bastards. Dread and then Dead World. Well, I think this I, is probably the most disagreement we've had so far. I need to be honest with myself. You do? Like, I don't think it's, like, the best thing in the world, but, like, if I had to, like... If they were both my children, and I had to <laughs> shoot one of them... <laughs> You'd like, shoot Judge Dredd? I think I'd shoot Child Judge Dredd. Good luck. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've seen what, like, Cadet Dredd's like. But, like, you know, Baby Dredd. Mm. You know, Swaddled Baby Dredd. Like, working the mines on <laughs> that one planet, Dredd. <laughs> He would work the fuck out of those <laughs> mines. He would have them well organised by the end of that. That was a good prog. Like, yeah. I, I really, really enjoyed that. Did we do the thing about it? Because it's not a lion cover. Oh, yes. Uh, we did talk before about do we think that that should be the cover story? Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> Probably no, because it's just a generic picture of Judge Dredd. I would say... And, like, it shouldn't... Re based on the story, it shouldn't really be anything else yeah. if it's from that Dredd story. I mean, maybe that other judge who is more of the star of that strip, but then why wouldn't you have Judge Dredd on the cover? Yeah, well, you, it's your, like I was saying, it's a generic, here's Judge Dredd, you mm. remember Judge Dredd, buy a Judge Dredd thing. What, what would you give the cover to? Difficult, because the things in this comic are spoilers. Yeah. Because, like, I would say, have a fucking owl bore on there. Yeah, but, but that's like, the last page reveal. That's the last page. So maybe next prog you could have an owl bore. I would also say maybe have an inflation baby, <laughs> oh, like, God. ripping its way out of the mother on no, the cover. No, you, you don't want the Comics Code Authority to be on your ass. Comics Code The authority in Britain. I don't recognise the Comics <laughs> Code Authority. No, no, I, no. no, no neither does anybody, but yeah, it was the, the, the reference that my brain went to. I think... Feral and Foe deserves it. But, I would agree. I would put Feral and Foe. But I don't know what you would put on Feral I and Foe. I would probably just put like an action shot of like the, the those three guys the, maybe firing the gun down the stairs. Firing and, the gun, yeah. Um, and and uh, the Malcolmist like doing some wavy hands green light. Yeah. I hope they get it next week. Yeah. And I hope it is like an elbow because like we've had that reveal now and That'll definitely have have something to do with it. It would actually be funny if like it was Feral and Foe, but it was actually just Mrs. Oftlack. Like, with our arms crossed, standing, yes! standing in front of the doorway, not letting you in. That would be amazing. Or just, like, just like an over-sized one of her, like, standing over, like, the characters. Yeah. And the characters are like, ooh. <laughs> like she's the main villain. She yeah. might be the main she, villain. She could be, as far as we know. Or yeah. she could be, like, a surprising top lad that comes in with, like, a, a violent action save. Because mm. she's massive. But, yeah, Feral and Foe. I feel like I had other things to say, but I think I've exhausted... Everything I could say. Should we do our wrap up? Should we do our? Uh, we probably should do a wrap up. I'm not entirely sure how long we've been recording. I mean, hopefully we have been recording. Yeah. There's a. It's been one coming up, coming up on two hours. Uh, yeah, we should definitely stop. We should stop now. Please um, like this video. See, yep. if, if you found us on YouTube, like the video. Yeah. Give us a subscribe and leave a comment because yep. we've probably got <laughs> something wrong. Ring the bell. Yeah, yeah. I remembered about that this week. You don't see many YouTubers mentioning that anymore. Do not. I don't, anyway. Maybe it's just different YouTubers. Uh, we are also on all the places where you can download podcasts. So Apple Podcasts and... Uh, Spotify. Spotify and various podcast apps. So 
Leave us a review. That's the one about that. Leave, leave us, us a, a five-star review. Well, leave us a five-star review, right? Mm-hmm. No matter what, no matter how you feel, five-star review, and then just talk shit at us because it's yeah. probably stuff that you're violently angry about. <laughs> All um, the Dead World, like, fans, just come talk at us. All four of you. All four of you, like, I'm sure you could talk some shit at us. The four and... in question being Judge Death, Judge Fire, <laughs> Judge Fear, and no, Judge Mortis. I don't, I can't cope with the dark judges giving me, like, online hate. That would be, <laughs> I couldn't sleep. Uh, we're on Twitter, did we say that? No, we didn't, but we are. We're, we're on Twitter, under Progslog. Progslog. Uh, we're boys from the pod podcast, so you can also find that podcast in the various places, and uh, does that have a, a YouTube, actually? The boys, from the, the boys from the Prog is on YouTube. Just search Boys from the Prog. Boys not, from, not Boys from the Prog. <laughs> boys from the Slog. No, <laughs> Boys from the Pod. Yep. All one word. And then you'll find it on YouTube. Uh, so check us out there. Bit of a different thing. Um, but it is us yammering. Is us and, and, and our friend David. Uh, the music for this podcast was provided by the Colton Hove School of Psychic Defence. Thank you for listening. We should Before we thank them, we should say our art was done by Jess Kate Fine Art. Yep. Is it Jess Kate Fine Art or is it just... I believe it's Jess Kate Fine Art now. You can yeah. find them on Instagram? Question mark? We're professional. Just just Google it. Yeah. Just Google it. Um, bye. 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 bye.